Growing up in the late 90s and early 2000s, there was a legendary Saturday morning cartoon show that came out which introduced a whole generation to the Caped Crusader, a show known as Batman the Animated Series. It was a show written by Bruce Tim and Paul Dini that has had really good craftsmanship put into its animation, art style, and world building that has masterfully adapted many of the Dark Knight's comic book adventures while introducing many characters and origin stories that are now canon to the Batman comics lore. And the man who has been selected to play the world's greatest detective was none other than the legendary Kevin Conroy, who in all respects brought a heavy dose of grit and authority to the role. Here's what I mean. Hmm, crimson fever. Lousy way to go. No cure, you know. The name. Now. Which no other Batman actor since then or now has managed to even come close to replicating it. Which has made him the most definitive voice of the character, to the point where millions of fans can't even look at a single image or silhouette of Batman without hearing his voice come out of the figure, as if this is how his vocal cords actually sound like coming from his throat and mouth. When I read Batman comics, no matter which era it's from, my mind automatically hears the voice of Kevin Conroy as Batman in every single panel. It's that clear level of quality and notoriety that has led Kevin Conroy to essentially become the reoccurring voice of Batman in almost every major DC animated project, including the DCAU and more, all the way to the critically acclaimed and fan beloved Arkham games which was, and is, in my opinion, the greatest performance of his as the Dark Knight. The Arkham Knight, Barbara Gordon, tell me where they are. So that's who he had, the Commissioner's little girl. I'll break every bone in your body, Cobblepot. I kid you not, he nailed it to the point where I thought the Batman could literally be standing right beside me. He even voiced him in the Injustice titles, doing a really good job of portraying him in those games. He has become that iconic to the point where he's been putting his heart and soul into this one character in many different incarnations of this one superhero that has been illustrated and written into comic books by Bob Kane and Bill Finger back in 1939 for three whole decades throughout many projects, with a great deal of passion for the detective and a lot of love for his fans, just like the great Stan Lee. In each game or comic movie convention, he would always go out of his way to meet many of the fans who really did enjoy his portrayal of Batman, delivering lines on the spot or signing autographs with a lot of the fans who were lucky enough to meet him stating that he would often give a very warm welcome, revealing himself as one of the kindest and most down-to-earth human beings on the planet, showing himself as a genuine good man. Even fellow cast members had the same opinion of him, with Mark Hamill famous for his role as the Joker, having this to say, he was one of my favorite people on the planet and I loved him like a brother. He truly cared for the people around him, his decency was shown through everything that he did. Every time I saw him and spoke with him, my spirits were elevated. He was such a good man to the point that he was cooking meals during the whole 9-11 crisis to feed the affected survivors. Here's the entire story from his perspective. The attacks on 9-11, we getting all these, you know, hundreds of meals ready. And this one guy, in the middle of the night, like three nights into this, he goes, so my day job is I'm an architect. He says, what's your day job? I said, well, I do voices mostly. When I knew it. He said, you're the guy who does Batman. You're that Kevin Conroy. So he goes into this dining hall. And this is, you know, the first week after the attack. And there's been like just this somber sadness. And you hear him go, guys, guys, you're not going to believe who's been cooking your dinners. It's Batman. This long silence in here. Bullshit! From the back of the place. And, and he said, then someone else says, Make him prove it! So I thought, oh, this is good. So I'm in the back kitchen, and I do from the back kitchen, I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman! It's this long pause, and then you hear from the back of the place. Holy f that is Batman! 
Now regarding his performance as Batman, he got the call from one of his agents informing him of the role in the animated series back when he knew nothing about the character whatsoever. In fact, he managed to get the part through Bruce Timm's direction alone as he was walking him through the Bruce Wayne Batman duality and how it stemmed through the death of his parents as a kid to where Bruce asked, can you relate to that? To where Kevin replied, I'll just go off of what you told me and try my best to act out the role. And to no one's surprise, he nailed it. Because unknown to the public, he has suffered a very similar tragedy that has been recently detailed by Kevin's contribution to DC's Pride issue, Finding Batman, where he has revealed that growing up he was hiding the fact that he was a queer kid putting on a mask so to speak, to hide that information from his community, despite being lucky enough to study at Gillard to kickstart an acting career, but he was in a family riddled with mental illnesses, with a schizophrenic brother who was being cared for by Kevin on a 24-7 basis, add to the fact that a divorce happened between his parents that caused the father to purposefully crash his car and stab himself. The sight of the death was truly devastating, even though he has gotten many roles at the time that range from Broadway plays and Shakespearean classics, he has also faced many hardships during the time, as it was at the rise of the AIDS epidemic. He has seen many of his fellow colleagues and producers who have kept falling due to the rampant disease. As he was moving from hospital room to hospital room, he was still frequently taking care of his brother, even going as far as hiring a nurse to look after him if he wasn't around. To top it all off, he was met with copious amounts of homophobia from other producers who were throwing slurs around in his general direction to where he was waiting for three whole days for a call to a job. He even called the producer for those three days. The producer finally answers the call, just to let him know that he wasn't who they were expecting him to be while furiously shouting out homophobic slurs to then slam his chances of getting any sort of work till he got that one faithful call that would change his entire life and deliver the most iconic voice that will shake the earth to its very core. As he walked into that booth, just going by the direction Bruce Tim provided him with, he found himself easily getting into that headspace as he got into the Bruce Wayne Batman duality with ease. As he was putting on a mask since his own childhood, he came to the realization that his public persona was very different to the man who he really was, as he has also faced many deaths in his life similar to that of Bruce Wayne. That is how he ended up giving us that deep husky rumbling sound that is now known to millions of comic book fans as the actual voice of Batman because Kevin Conroy himself was the Batman in many ways I mean think about it. The character is known to have suffered many great tragedies riddled with many losses and failures who manages to persevere and overcome these many adversities who lives with dual personas. It just so happens that Kevin Conroy has lived a similar life in a way to which makes him as aspirational as the character being played by him for 30 years. Now as the making of this video, Kevin Conroy has unfortunately passed away at the age of 66 years old due to a short-lived battle with cancer, marking the 11th of November 2022 as the day that the Batman died. In all honesty, Kevin Conroy's portrayal of the Dark Knight is one that no one will ever be able to come close to, let alone surpass. He has managed to brilliantly tap into the psychology of both Bruce Wayne and Batman with his voice alone in a way that live action actors from Adam West all the way to Robert Pattinson were unable to achieve. Every time he was voicing the world's greatest detective, you can hear a lot of the grit and tragedy that this character has faced since that faithful night in Crime Alley, to the point where you can feel the effects of that tragic evening on Bruce Wayne's psyche. So to that I say, rest in peace legend, thank you for everything, you'll always be the real Batman. You may be gone, but you'll never be forgotten. This is the Devil Joe, signing out. Am I blue? 
Am I blue? Ain't these tears in my eyes telling you? Am I blue? You'd be too if each.